programming a remote-controlled portable Raspberry Pi audio player. I finally connected the little Bluetooth remote shutter to my heavy little MP3 player invention. My 1998 design was a small MP3 decoder equipped printed circuit board strapped onto a huge CD-ROM drive filled with a lot of mod files converted to high-quality MP3s. It was meant for a car, but also for learning. Inventions are important things. They help us dream and learn. I took a computer hardware class, but it was so simple that it was painful to see my time being wasted. It was all good people, weird, but okay. But it is that kind of simplified education that holds everyone back. And I know it. Everyone was just laid back, the semester passed, everyone got an A and nobody learned a thing. Yes, there was no education to be had. Plus I had to hurry with my English. I still had a lot of words to learn. It was a pretty big deal for me, so I spent my teenage years reading paperbacks at Plymouth's Denny's. Our education has to progress the way water moves through a piece of paper. Note how it starts as a dot, and then it spreads in all directions, as far as it can see. The more it knows, the more it grows. We must reject fake education. We just can't afford to tolerate it. I had my little invention, but I didn't have so much as an LED to make a throwy. The player I finished today has a battery where the old CD-ROM was supposed to go. And the PCB is now replaced with an actual GNU Linux powered computer. I finished the first version of the control program for the shutter thingy, but I didn't even try to figure out the buttons. The thought hardly even occurred to me. The shutter has six buttons that trigger a lot of data, like a macro or a key combination. I can see that a single button press triggers multiple light pen actions. Light pen is probably what the Linux kernel calls a finger. The left and right buttons on the remote trigger may be simulating a swipe. Up and down actually triggers many rows of data as if counting from 0 to 100. Holding down the Y-axis key does something slightly different. It slides values between 0 and probably 1000. The values are always the same. There is no continuation from where the button last left off. So if I'm always getting the same events, I can just glue, concatenate, all the data and call it a single button. The long press is a bit off because the stream of data that long press sends ends when a person lets go of the button. It ends at an arbitrary location within that 1000 virtual key presses. It is really good for changing the audio volume, but I'll have to think about it some more. So the program I wrote has a learn function that concatenates all the button data into a single recognizable ID. And when the program is in normal operations mode, it monitors for the presence of that same flurry of key presses, that same ID. When the learned and intercepted sequence matches, it then triggers a command that is manually associated with the ID. The play button simply stops music if it is already playing and then plays songs from the music folder, shuffling them first. Pressing play multiple times stops playing the current song and it picks a new one at random. It is surprisingly simple and functions like a real audio player. 
I had a fun time this Sunday learning how to manually connect to a Bluetooth device. It took me four hours because that little shutter button pad demands that pairing the device and connecting the device happens nearly instantly. I couldn't issue the commands manually. I only had hundreds of milliseconds to go from pair to connect. So it needed to be scripted. The computer had to issue the connect right after pairing instantly. This little 50 or $75 invention is extremely interesting. Even for people that like having closed source phones around. Not only can you control everything from your phone, but also proxy your phone traffic through Pi-hole, which greatly reduces spam and ads. The openness of the Raspberry Pi and the underlying GNU Linux allows for things that aren't possible with closed source phones. It is this kind of tinkering that makes learning GNU Linux fun and painless. It takes many years. It should take many years. There is no hurry. In the end, being able to reprogram things without investing too much time into custom PCBs is a fun talent to have. I think my next project is going to be a Linux-driven boombox.